Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today I'm just going to do a general collective reading pulling on masculine and feminine energy for those this may um, resonate for. Okay, <laughs> um, I've already pulled the feminine and masculine cards as well as a few identifiers uh, using tarot as an identifier as well, sort of situation. Just to see where we're at as well as um, a Soul Journey lesson card pull. And we will go ahead and live pull from the Kipper as well, just to get a couple more and some advice from the Halloween Oracle. Um, and then polish it off with the New Orleans Oracle advice. So the card pull for the feminine energy is Oba, domesticity. So if I just create some space there and you can still see it. Now Oba talks about um, being domestic as a form of self-care. Let's see. There we go. It's going to stay up. Good. <laughs> it also talks about marriage and domesticity, focusing on home and domestic issues as a form of self-care. Yes. Um, so she's really just kind of like the energy of this card is telling you that whoever this is for, you're at home right now and you're, you're focusing on things at home and kind of giving yourself some balance back into place for that, right? This gives me a, a big family vibe as well. Your masculine energy, the first card, the reaction two that popped up was Eros, love. And Eros talks about love liberating you out of chaos um, in mind, body, and soul, and with trust. So I'm still getting like, a situation where it's very home vibe, whether it be family or a marriage or a relationship, living circumstance together. But there is still talk of needing self-care and Vishnu pops up in the reverse and that kind of reinforces that. Vishnu is all about balancing. And in the reverse, it's advice to seek out and identify any imbalances that you may have that have created insecurity somehow, either in health or money, right? So maybe there's some issues surrounding the home regarding health and money. Now, <laughs> this also feels like my reading a little bit, so I'm included in the equation today. Yay, all right, cool, all right. And based on what I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of similarities there, but bits and pieces. You know, at home here, you know, um, my husband's disabled. <laughs> so of course there's gonna be imbalances in money and health, right? He's unable to actually physically have a job and be on his feet for too long. He can barely even drive a car longer than 30 minutes. <laughs> he does his best, though. So I try to give him work in other ways and find you know, ways for him to do his own self-care in a, in a way that his physical being will allow him, right? Okay. <laughs> it does get challenging, you know, but as long as, you know, you stay focused on all the options ahead for being able to divvy up and delegate the task, you'd be fine. I pulled from the location identifiers in case this strikes of any identifying factor, circumstance, characteristic, personality trait, that sort of thing. Blizzard came up, town, air and wind, and fog, snow, rain, drizzle. So maybe it might be memories with whoever this is. Um, or things you enjoyed to do together, you know, um, experiences you might have had. Could be an air sign. I'm going to go ahead and pull from, or rather, um, shake up the dice, and I will get planetary placements and zodiacs to go with it. Let's see who this might be involving. All right. We have Scorpio. I'm going to do all eight dice for you guys. Definitely Scorpio, because his second Scorpio came out. So it might be heavily aspected. We've got Sagittarius. Can you see it? Or is my thumb in the way? There you go. <laughs> and we've got Aquarius. Okay. As your zodiacs. We have Sun Sign. As a place, planetary placement, we have, what is this one? Oh, Mercury. 
we have Jupiter. And last but not least, we have Venus. So Venus, Jupiter, Mercury, star sign could be Scorpio, Sag, Aquarius. There we go. All right. Any combination of those placements. Also pulled people identifiers. Obviously, someone that's still alive. <laughs> A spouse. Male gender, cis, trans, etc., could also involve a half sibling, half cousin, something half. Maybe you're a twin, but not necessarily a twin foot, but maybe a biological twin. <laughs> that could also indicate half. <laughs> I also see that card as that. Also pulled from the Tarot, the first card that came out was the High Priestess. Moon in a water sign, so that might also be relevant. Judgment in the reverse. I believe that's Pluto in fire sign, although I don't know anyone's Pluto placement. <laughs> and Knight of Pentacles, which is Earth, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. All right, so any of those combinations would be good. Now, the High Priestess indicates to me someone is sort of next level Empress. Highly intuitive, very tapped in, um, psychic abilities, you know, instinct, enlightenment, unconsciousness, unconscious mystery, knowing inner secrets. She knows how to work the, the pillars of light and dark there in the gray area in between, you know, higher power, someone that's really deeply connected, um, as well as tangible as well. So this could be a circumstance where this household where one is very tapped in and the other one not so much if they're this Knight of Pentacles, right? Still a good dude, don't get me wrong. A little slow, might be, you know, having a hard time keeping up. The judgment in reverse kind of tells me a little bit of that as well, which is also about self-doubt and ignoring true self and disillusionment, self-deprecating, not trusting yourself. Maybe there's a disconnect from spirit somewhere in this household. And self-care would be really good because it would bring you into the into the present. So even the domesticity issues will, you know, the domestic tasks, I should say, issues, um, would be good to keep you grounded, right? And help with that. Because it, it happens all the time. You know, a lot of us that have awakened are usually around people that are not awakened and it gets challenging. That is my situation too. So I'm sitting here looking at it going, yeah, this is my, this is my reading as well. And the Knight of Pentacles is also someone that's um, in the upright is efficient and responsible and loyal and trustworthy and patient. So there's still still some good time here with this connection, um, this circumstance, this household um, dynamic where, you know, one can just kind of hang out and do whatever they're doing spiritually and do their self-care and Maybe even assist the other, and the other might be coming in to do that as well. I'm feeling that as well. The Soul Journey card that was picked up is love. I commit to seeing the, the good in all things. And I'll just go ahead and read my little cheat sheet on that. So a lot of good bits and pieces in there, and they may re resonate. All right. In the second half. All right. Love. You are love. Love is an inherent vibration. The meaning to life is love. Love is a healing energy. Our souls incarnate to live, learn, and experience in that energy. When we live in this energy, we will know the truths. I'm actually getting a very good vibe from this, this reading here. So let's pull... A few cards from the kicker. See if we can pull any other situational things about it. Spirit, what do you have? We'll just do a couple. All right. We got a few. So, journey popped up. Unexpected income. So, it actually is pretty decent. We got the numbers 10, 27. And you also have lovers, 15. 
10 also breaks down to a one for new beginnings. The journey card could indicate maybe there's a change on the horizon for the better, right? With regards to this scenario where maybe there's some balancing might need to come into play. Um, I also see the unexpected income card, not just as like, hey, you got a pay raise or um, a tax return came back, but I also sort of see it as a come up, a spiritual upgrade from the divine as well. Because you see how he's wearing a gold ring you know, kind of tells to me that this is someone of a higher position, right? And the divine can definitely be of a higher position. And when it's next to this journey card, I definitely see it as kind of like spiritual coming in from the tangible and kind of blending a little bit, right? And this is definitely about some kind of partnership because the lovers is there. Um, 15 breaks down to a six as well. That may mean something for you. All right, so let's pull a card from the Halloween Oracle. Let's see if we can get any more insight regarding that. All right, Spirit, what you got for us? And we can probably do a few. I'm just going to skim through the book, though. All right, and one more. Thank you. All right, our first card out is the Owl. Wise seeing, wise action. That's our, that's our High Priestess card. <laughs> we have Winter, the sacredness of pausing. Now I see where the Knight of Pentacles is coming into play. And Death, the eternal cycle begins here. So something new is on the horizon and you need a little bit of pause and paying attention and just focusing on self and self-care. All right, okay. So, and that went owl to death. All right. All right. I'll go ahead and read the little poem at the top. Silent winged and wise, all seeing creature of the night, show me the way I will follow you in flight. Should the hooting owl come looking for you this Halloween, uh -huh, it indicates the need for wise counsel or further information before you make a decision. So this, this could have a timing of a to this next Halloween, right? Okay, since it mentioned that. Considered action is warranted. Think before you act emotionally and ensure you think strategically, not impulsively. So it's about both using your head and your heart to making decisions. Winter, the sacredness of pausing. Lightly I step for the earth falls asleep, a lullaby to rest and pause, the soul's secret to keep. It's time to let what no longer serves you die away. Where it seems natural and right to let things have been bothering you for some time die back, take real action to change those things. Anything that is superflu superfluous, <laughs> extra and burdensome, release it. And that sounds good. So if there's anything in this scenario that doesn't seem right, that's just extra, and it doesn't seem to vibe anymore about the scenario, it's time to change it. But, you know, you can also kind of keep a balance in the mix as well. You change the things around you. Um, if the person themselves is not right for you, because it is night energy. So it's really up to you. Do as you so please. <laughs> you know, and that could mean also something about the judgment being in reverse too. And it could be a bad idea to get rid of a knight of pentacles because they're not in alignment with the high priestess. But then again, it could also be a bad idea to keep them around. So you've got to kind of have to shift gears and see what things need to go that might be burdensome and make it seem that this night is not there for you or not, right? Like, so for me, I like my Knight of Pentacles, okay? He's a good guy. He's actually got the potential to become an emperor and he's almost on his way, okay? He's got his shoes with his feet. Other than that, we can give him other things to do and he's still productive, right? He's, he's not extra or burdensome, you know? So I don't really see him as that. I do see the things in our life, um, the tangible items that have to go, and that's why I've been tackling the garage. <laughs> and so far, it's given him something to do, too. So that's And he's been helping out. And he's actually been improving health in the process of it. It's taking a while, but it's fine. we got we got time. <laughs> the Knight of Pentacles does not move quick. <laughs> so he might be in that energy from time to time. Death, the eternal cycle begins here. Tis not the end, though I may pass in the night. 
I get to do my time over, although you may get a fright. <laughs> do not be afraid if you pull the death card, as it simply means that something is falling away, or will do so, so you can begin strongly afresh. There is great power in this clearing. If you pull this card at Halloween particularly, since winter hinted at that, you might want to come back to this later if that's starting to pan out that way this reading is panning out. The message is still stronger still and you should actively celebrate this new beginning. <laughs> so whatever's going to happen is going to be transformative and for the greater for your greater good, right? All right, so let's get some advice from the Halloween Oracle. Anything in the spirit? And I'm also kind of feeling pulling a mon you know, a mantra or affirmation card as well. All right, we'll do one more. Alrighty. We have 28 flow. There we go. And nine dreams. I'll start with dreams. 28 also breaks down to a 10. So we've got another nine there. We've got two nines in front of me. Is that 27? There is a fine line between a conscious state and a dreaming state. During your dreaming state, your dreams can represent premonitions as well as simple energy outlets for your underlying thoughts and concerns. Now is the time to pay careful attention to your dreams. Keeping a dream journal, whether verbal or written, will help you to recall your dreams. It will also provide a frame of reference that you can help you to decipher the messages and themes that your guides and higher self want to share with you. Your dreams may be trying to tell you something important about how you really feel about things that go on in your life when you are awake. These may be feelings that you do not fully understand or ones that you may be trying to ignore. Dreams can also give you kind of a heads up on things to come too. So whatever this pausing is going on that's needed for just work on self-care and pay attention to your dreams to see if there's any new messages. And since we're talking about dreams too, I will pull from our signs deck. Signs and signs deck as well. Okay. 28. Flow. Flow is the natural balance of all beings and things. The movement of the ocean and the cycles of the moon are all perfect examples of flow. They are ever-changing without judgment and a fluid form. Much like the ocean, the human experience of flow can be rather unpredictable. However, it's always as it should be. It is time for you to be aware of what your flow is, without judgment. This can mean anything from a minor change in daily habits that will put you more at ease to a major decision concerning career that may lead to a huge positive shift in your life. We did talk a little bit about career too, with regards to money matters, right, of the home, right? So maybe it's a home oriented type of career as well. Um, staying in your flow simply requires the awareness of how your energy is affected by your thoughts or experiences and choosing the thoughts or experiences that feed into your flow instead of taking you out of it. And that's where Vishnu comes into play as well, spirit. <laughs> Talking about maintaining some sort of balance and just kind of do that fine tweaking of your time, energy, and resources, right? Now let's get a sign. In case dreams might be impacted, or maybe they might show up in your dreams, who knows? Spirit, we'll get a few of these for the collective here. Please and thank you. you know, for extra confirmation when it happens. And we have four, right? Is this four? Yes, it's four. Okay. We have the number 777 on the light side, spiritual growth, solitude, time, go within, luck is happening, time for inner strength, and and uh, fears, I think that's uh, to facing fears, there we go, and to look forward towards the future. You, okay, well, this is where your fears may end up. 222 two, two on the shadow side, imbalance, lack of self-care, energy cleansing, balancing needing, self-care needed. The number 1212. Spirit is guiding you. Trust the universe. It's time to dream big. And black feather. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a tangible black feather. It could be something you just see on TV. It doesn't necessarily have to be an actual black feather. <laughs> One of my many crow presents. <laughs> 
protection is available. All right. Let's do a couple mantras, Spirit. I split the deck in half since there's more now. Mantras, affirmations. Let's do one from each half deck, please. Thank you. All right. First half deck, we have, I rebound quickly with resilience from all previous setbacks because I let go of all, all old limitations. All right, thank you. This half deck, thank you. Thank you. All right, we got two. Good. I am listening deeply with all my senses. I am mentally balanced and focused. I am allowing my true self to shine through with more loving power and light than ever before. And forgiveness is a natural byproduct of healing. There you go, guys. Have a great day.